How much dividend income can you make from $10,000? While $10,000 obviously isn't enough to retire, you'd be surprised just how much dividend income it can produce over time. Maybe you could even potentially pay for a yearly vacation or perhaps eventually make your monthly car payment. Now, there are many different ways that you can invest $10,000 to receive dividend income. So in this video, we will be looking at three different scenarios and determining which is best depending on your goals. Let's look at scenario one. For the first scenario, let's say we wanna make our investing process as simple as possible. So to do that, we're going to invest into an S&P 500 fund. So if we jump over to Seeking Alpha, which I have a link to in the description, you can see we're currently looking at the fund SPY, which is an S&P 500 ETF. Now, long-term, this fund has performed extremely well but what we really want to focus on is how much it's paying out in dividends and we can see as of right now the dividend yield for this fund is sitting at 1.55 percent so if we jump back over to our first scenario you can see our amount to invest is ten thousand dollars if the dividend yield right now is 1.55 percent I'll plug that in and hit enter and you can see our yearly dividend income would be $155 meaning our average monthly dividend income would be right at $13 now I know $13 a month from a $10,000 investment it seems pretty disappointed, but stay with me. There's a lot more to unpack here. For our second example, let's invest in one of the most popular dividend stocks of all time, Johnson & Johnson, who is a dividend king, meaning they've been increasing the amount they pay out in dividends for 50 consecutive years. If we jump over to Seeking Alpha, we can see right here, the starting dividend yield for this company is sitting at 3.14%. So if we jump back over to scenario two, we have $10,000 to invest. We'll plug in that starting dividend yield and hit enter, and we can see our yearly dividend income sitting at around 340 $14 and our average monthly dividend income twice as much as scenario one sitting at $26, but still really nothing to get excited about. And finally for scenario three, let's look at a popular covered call ETF. JEPI JEPI that's designed to produce quite a bit in dividend income. So if we jump over to Seeking Alpha, we can see the starting dividend yield for this fund sitting at 9.96%. If we jump back over to scenario three, we have our $10,000 to invest. We'll plug in 9.96% and hit enter. And you can see this produces nearly $1,000 a year in dividend income, which comes out to around $83 a month. Now, personally, I think $1,000 a year in dividend income is pretty solid and could probably help fund a vacation. And $83 a month isn't too bad as well, but personally, I would like to find a way to make $10,000 produce even more in dividend income. And fortunately for us, $10,000 can produce quite a bit more in dividend income than we saw in scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. While these scenarios do give us an idea of how much dividend income they could produce in their first year, it doesn't take into account the most powerful force in the investing universe, compounding. Let's look at how much dividend income each of these scenarios could produce on a longer time horizon. Looking back at scenario one, we can see we invested into an S&P 500 fund called SPY. If we jump back over to Seeking Alpha, we could see they had a starting yield of 1.55%. But if we jump over to the dividend tab, we can also see over the past five years, on average, they've been increasing the amount they pay out in dividends at a rate of around 5.35% and over the past 10 years at a rate of around 6.73%. So when we take into account the fact they increase the amount they pay out in dividends every single year, and we can also reinvest our dividends back into our portfolio, it radically changes the amount we can make in dividends every single month. To show this, let's jump over to a portfolio projection tab that I built out to see exactly how much dividend income this could produce over a long time horizon. If we go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more, you can see again, we're assuming a starting portfolio size of $10,000. We're assuming a price growth rate from this fund of around 8.5%, which is close to its average, a dividend growth rate of around 6%, close to the five and 10 year average. And then of course, a starting dividend yield of 1.55%. If we jump over to our long-term tab, you can see we have a lot to break down, so let's quickly begin. If we zoom in here, we can see the total amount we'll make in dividends over time increases exponentially. Over a 30-year time period, we could see we would make around $16,000 total in dividends. After around 20 years, around $7,500. After around 10 years, around $2,500. Meanwhile, our account value grows exponentially over time as well. After around 30 years, our account value would be over $161,000 from a $10,000 investment. After 20 years, around $71,000. And after 10 years, 
almost $28,500. But the bigger question I want to answer is how much monthly dividend income could this produce and how much dividend income will that be each year? We could see within just a couple of years, we could be expecting to receive around $15 a month in dividend income. After around 10 or so years, we could expect to receive around $22 a month. After around 20 years, we'd be receiving around $45 a month. And at the end of our 30 year period, we'd be receiving over $100 a month. And if we look at this annualized, we could see after 10 years, we'd be receiving around $318 a year in dividends. After 20 years, around $677. And after 30 years, around $1,242, which like we just saw, is a little over $100 a month in dividend income. If we look at our second scenario, again, we're looking at a popular dividend stock, Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson currently has a starting yield of 3.14%, and if we look at how they've grown their dividend over time, come down here, we can see their 5-year dividend growth rate close to 6%, and their 10-year dividend growth rate a little bit over 6%. So if we go back over to our portfolio projection model, you can see we're assuming a price growth rate of 5%, starting portfolio size of $10,000, dividend growth rate of 6%, and a starting dividend yield of 3.14%. If we look at the long-term tab, I'll zoom out just for a moment, and you can see the results are pretty radically different. We'll go ahead and zoom back in and break it down quickly. We can see after 30 years, the total amount you would have made in dividend income over $52,000, strictly from a one-time $10,000 investment. After 20 years, you would have made over $20,000, and after 10 years, you could have made over $5,867, not to mention at the end of a 30-year time period, your account value could be around $128,000. So while the account value is slightly lower than our first scenario, you would have made way more in passive dividend income. If we scroll down and look at those monthly dividend payments, we could see you'd be receiving over $440 every single month from this investment at the end of a 30 year time period. By around 2040, you could be making over $130 a month. And by 2030, you could be making around $50 a month in dividend income. And if we break this down on a yearly basis, we could see year one dividends would be around $342, year 10 around 780, year 20, you'd be making around $2,187 in dividend income. And by year 30, you could make over $5,336 a year in dividend income. For our third scenario, we were looking at the covered call ETF JEPI JEPI. We can see JEPI has a starting dividend yield sitting at around 9.96%. Now what you need to understand about this fund is it is a covered call ETF. And while I'm not gonna dig into it too much in this video, most of the time covered call ETFs don't increase the amount they pay out in dividends over time. And in fact, historically speaking, sometimes they even decrease the amount they pay out in dividends, which is something we have to take into consideration. So when we jump over to our portfolio projection tab, you can see I'm assuming a price growth rate of around 2%, a dividend growth rate of negative 1%, but a very high starting dividend yield sitting at 9.96%. So when we jump over to our long-term tab, we could see the total amount we could make in dividends over a 30-year period, close to $88,000 after around 20 years, around $47,000, and after 10 years, around $17,000. Meanwhile, our account value could end up being around $129,000 after 30 years, after 20, around $70,000, and after 10 years, around $31,000. Now, something you'll notice about our monthly dividend tab is it starts out paying quite a bit in dividends every single month. You could see at around 2025, we're close to around $100 a month. In 2035, around $200 a month, all the way over to 2045, around $327 a month. And at the end of a 30-year period, around $436 a month. If we look at those yearly dividends, we could see in year one, over $1,000 in dividend income. Year 10, $2,100. Year 20, $3,758. And year 30, $5,000. $5,242 in dividend income. Now, again, this isn't a video on covered call ETFs. There's a lot more to understand about covered call ETFs. So if you want to know more about JEPI, then you can click on the video at the link in the description. Now we have a decent idea of how much dividend income each of these three scenarios could produce over time. But I want to leave you with one final thought and one final fund, which is the fund that I personally invest into. And that is the dividend growth ETF SCHD. SCHD is currently yielding around 3.81% and historically has yielded around 35 to 3.6%. If we look at the dividend growth rates for this fund, it's absolutely phenomenal. We have a five-year dividend growth rate of around 13.5% and a 10-year dividend growth rate of over 11%. So if we jump over to our portfolio projections tab, and let's say we want to be very conservative with our projections and project lower growth rates, we'll assume a price growth rate of 7% dividend growth rate of 7% and a starting dividend yield of 3.6%. 
quickly off a glance, we could see the total amount we could make in dividends is around $74,386 and our account value could grow to over $223,000. If we look at the amount we make in monthly dividends, this is where we really start to see a difference. Over a 30 year time period, we could be receiving over $670 every single month in dividend income. And if we look at this on a yearly basis, we could see in year one, while we don't make as much in dividend income as we would with a higher yielding stock, due to the compounding effect, we would start to make more in dividend income every year. And by year 30, we could be receiving over $8,000 a year in dividend income. So while these are simply projections and investment returns aren't guaranteed, one thing clearly remains true. If you wanna maximize your dividend income long-term, dividend growth investing is the way to go. And if you're looking for immediate dividend income, higher yielding stocks may be the better option. But go ahead and let me know if you were surprised by the amount you can make in dividend income from $10,000. If you'd like to download the spreadsheet using this video, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.